Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jung Sung Kim, uh, Severance Hospital Yonsei University, South Korea. Uh, my co-moderator, Juan Kim, Jeonnam National University Hospital. Also, we invited a prestigious panelist, So Hosoba, uh, Sunsuke Kubo, Takeshi Matsumoto, Kim Hyun Suk, and Chak Yu So. So uh, I would like contact to the Asam Medical Center. Dr. Kang is there? Can you hear me? Hello, I'm here. Yeah. Yes, I can hear you very well. Yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Doyen Gang. From now we are in the Asam Medical Center, and I will introduce our tier team: uh, Professor Dae Kim, the imaging specialist, and Jin Hori, our the senior interventional the fellow, and Do Kyung Lee, our anesthesiologist, and we prepared a patient with a functional MR. Okay, can you present the okay. case? Thank you, introduction. I'm Jin Lee from Azam Medical Center. Um, today our patient is 63 years old male, was admitted for worsening dyspnea. He had a history of a cardiogenic shock with ECMO insertion due to STEMI at four months ago. He had been guideline di directed medical therapy for ischemic cardiomyopathy. The echocardiography showed the severe mitral regurgitation with leaflet tethering due to ischemic insult of posterior wall. Actually, the patient discharged one month ago, but he had a multiple recurrent heart, heart failure aggravation event. And two days ago, he visited the emergency department <coughs> for dyspnea, so we admit by the CCU and volume control due to IV logics and inotropics. He had the past medical history of STEMI four months ago, and uh, the hospital during the uh, intervention uh, thrombosis aspiration at the circumflex artery and provide distal LAD. And he had a uh, atrial fibrillation and multiple stroke event with LV thrombus, so we do the anticoagulation. Next, he had the hypertension and hyperdyslipidemia, and FTS score is 7.7%. And the medication is guideline directed for heart failure management, includes SGLT2 inhibitor and beta blocker and spinolactone. Entrancer does not apply for hypotension. And then the IVLogix for after heart fertilization and dovutamine and dopamine was applied. And next, and the chest X-ray showed the cardiomegaly <coughs> and pulmonary congestion. Next. The case showed baseline, basically a sinus rhythm with a small widening of the QRS components. Next. The coronary angiogram upper side is an uh, <coughs> event at the four months ago. You can see the distal circumflex after is total occluded. And downside imaging is a repeat coronary angiogram and two months after that, in the next procedure, RCA was good and circumflex and LAD flow is uh, good with moderate stenosis at the mid LAD part. Next, there's a briefly uh, conclusion of a TT and TE imaging as have a severe LV dysfunction with a severe ML and moderate functional TR with a, a moderate to severe pulmonary hypertension. Next, uh, this is as a cardiac yes. imaging. Yeah, Professor Dae Kim will uh, explain the detail of the cardiac imaging. Okay, uh, can you see the image? This is taken from a medical center. This is the image from uh, 22 years ago. Typical mixed time HCM in this patient. Uh, after then, he lost the follow-up, uh, just uh, appeared in our hospital this year. In, uh, the image occurred in uh, this year. 
you can clearly see in Palestine long X image, definitely posterior wall motion ability and uh, posterior reflex portion scattering causing ischemic MR. In uh, apical view, four chamber, two chamber, and three chamber, you can clearly see posterior wall motion ability, a connecting movement, and papillomal dysfunction, and persistent posterior reflex tethering. The apex uh, also shows a uh, total a kinetic movement. Uh, the ejection fraction of the sodium percent and uh, TR peak burst and the IV plus are indicating severe pulmonary hypertension. Uh, we, this is a zooming view of apex. Uh, the apical thrombus was suspected, and in four chamber view, a uh, moderate degree of MR uh, was seen. However, in two chamber view, you can clearly see diffuse MR jet is regurging from the whole quartation plane. This finding indicates that uh, the degree of MR greater than a moderate degree. We performed a uh, uh, trans the echo. You can clearly see diffuse MR jet according in by commissional view according to the crop decision line, indicating a uh, suggestion of uh, severe MR. You can clearly see some crop tension defect in the middle of the uh, 3D image, uh, and diffuse MR jet uh, is regurging from the whole crop tension line in, from central. The binocular tractor area measured by 3D was 0.9, indicating a severe MR. Uh, in a mid as far as long axis view, the posterior leaflet length, uh, 15 millimeter, uh, indicating we can use the uh, long clip in this patient. The mitral bay area uh, measured with 3D was 7.7 square centimeter. In left upper pulmonary vein, left upper pulmonary vein, right upper pulmonary vein, you can see uh, no systolic flow and uh, some reversal of the mitral pulmonary vein flow. This is the MRI image uh, with LG measurement. Uh, you can clearly see the whole sickness LG in uh, apex and the sum LG in uh, posterior lateral uh, segment uh, made by a recent circumflex artery infarction. Uh, in this is the long X view. Uh, you can clearly see the whole sequence LG from apex to mid wall. And in mid wall short axis image, uh, you can clearly see some patches in papillary muscle LG on papillary muscle, indicating papillary muscle dysfunction or upper level of LV. Uh, some 50% uh, of threat uh, infarct LG uh, in this patient. Total LG volume was 34%. 34, 34%. Let's move to echo images. Okay. Let me conclude the patient history. 63-year-old male patient, uh, maybe uh, with a long history of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and maybe in the burnout phase of the HGM. <coughs> and before four months, the patient was doing well, but after the STEMI event, and the multiple embolic infarction at the LAD and circumflex, the patient could not be discharged after for two months after ECMO and heart failure management. And even after the discharge, the patient repeated the hospitalization three times more, even with the heart failure specialist care. And this time, we planned the tear procedure, and the patient visited early in the emergency department for the heart failure aggravation. And in CCU, we infused to IV dopamine and dopamine and IV lasix, and then the volume is the reduced and the patient became much better now. And now, can you please show the T image now? Yeah, uh, can you see the echo image right now? Yeah, we can see. Uh, these yeah, images yeah. were acquired just before the procedure. Degree of MR seems to be uh, decreased uh, right now, but uh, we have to make sure that uh, the patient on the full inotropic support and IV dietics, the reversal of pulmonary vein uh, improved uh, since the rest study. But although the diastolic dominant flow in all pulmonary veins. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, biplane view. The degree of MR usually from the central. Uh, we initially targeted the septal puncture at uh, 4.3. We identified a slightly posterior puncture from the uh, medial commissure. Can, can yeah, you, the uh, wire you, is yeah. in. The final central puncture height 4.6 centimeter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to ask the I want to ask the comment from the experienced 
moderating panels about our patient. Yeah, is there any question or comment? I think uh, there is uh, no medication of interest in this patient rather than yes, just SGLT2 inhibitor. Is there any reason yeah. for that? Uh, we could not uh, we could not sustain the interest or last inhibitor because of the low blood pressure. Mm. The patient now blood pressure is okay, but he's on dopamine. Dopamine, the vitamin, yeah. and norepinephrine full inotropic yeah, support. The yeah. blood pressure in the world was less than about 80s, so we could not begin. I so, tried yeah. uh, once okay. before, but the patient so, was in trouble. Uh, Dr. Kang, this is uh, Kent from yep. Hong Kong. So my first uh, question that I want to discuss is that uh, would you have done the mitral clip even earlier? Because uh, from time to time, we actually see patients that has uh, severe mitral regurgitation after a uh, myocardial infarction that cannot be stabilized. And as you mentioned, uh, your patient is put on ATMO for quite um, uh, two months already. I mean, has been lingering around in the hospital for two months. Uh, what is your p uh, standpoint of uh, performing the edge to edge repair as a sort of a salvage operation uh, at the get go, or rather than and like what you do now, wait um, to titrate the medical therapy? Yes, oh, that's a great opinion, and I also agree with your opinion. However, the patient was admitted in other hospital for initial event with a STEMI and ECMO and heart failure management for two months, and then he visited me. Yeah. So at that time, uh, we could not consider the, the metal clip at that time with the first event. And I transferred the patient to hospital specialist. And even after the full medication, the patient is unstable. And he uh, re-transferred me for tear procedure. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, make a decision of the tear in acute patient to, to, uh, what, what would be the optimal timing of the tear for such kind of patient? So is there a comment? I think it's yeah. very uh, possible benefit uh, in this kind of patient because after tear procedure, it decreases MR, and then we can uh, expect to increase the blood pressure, then we can apply yeah. other uh, uh, anti uh, <coughs> heart failure uh, medications such as antrestol or other medication. I think it's yeah. much better yeah, for the patient. Yes, as the, and uh, because of the time limit, I will yeah. uh, move yeah, to yeah, the procedure. Yeah. Yeah, yes. And we did the septal puncture. Uh, can you please show the puncture echo? Yeah. Because the septum was uh, thick, so uh, we used the, the OV needle for RF. Yeah. And then I advanced the SGC. Can you please show it? Next, yeah. and then next, and we selected the XTW, mm. and then advanced the XTW into LA. Do you have any, uh, Real -time any idea about the XTW clip selection? Do you Is agree there or any not? Other opinion rather than XTW? Yes, I agree because the MR jet is very broad. Okay. So how yeah, many clips do you the plan? Point. How many clips? Two, Actually, two yeah. clips. Yeah. Two clips. Yeah. We plan two yeah. because the Belvior is 7.0 square centimeter and posterior length is 15 millimeter. I think the two XTW clip uh, will be enough without yeah. increase the mean pressure gradient. And considering the patient, the situation, I wanna minimize the MR degree and the increase the stability with the two clips. Yeah, you so know the in, in the in the morning. Clip. In, from the yeah. Cedar Sinai, they did a three clip <laughs> <laughs> for the degenerative case. <laughs> okay, so now we are in the LA, and yeah, already uh, located yeah. on the uh, just above the valve. valve. And I will check That's the trajectory. The... And the echo view is not so good. The patient is a little bit the cubitus position Left makes it better. Three degree, okay. Okay. Pipeline image of Jintaram, Jintaram. Yes. First target of the uh, clip is uh, 
uh, medial A to B2, right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Mm. The imaging is not so good. Uh, okay. At Kim, how do you like this project? Yeah, track is okay. So is, isn't it too M dive? Do you like it? Yeah. Looks like okay. Media dive. Yeah. Yeah, slightly M dive. So I will release the M. Nope. And how about this? Oh, uh, looks good. Yeah, looks better. And I will move a little bit to media. Media, Here is yeah. target. Yeah. Okay, open the clip, please. Yes, I opened. Yeah, let's move to 3D. Yeah, unpass it, please. Okay, counterclockwise, please. Yeah, 12 better. and 6 o'clock will be yeah. uh, enough, yeah. Okay, Do you like slightly it? or a little bit? A little bit more. Okay. Okay, let's move to explain. Then we'll check the grip pole. Five planes. The grip pole function mm. is okay. And the dotted grip pole would be the anterior. Anterior, mm, yeah. Yeah, anterior. yeah, that's correct. Let me check the trajectory again before coming into the LA, mm -hmm. LB. The image uh, when it's clear when I dip uh, into the uh, uh, yeah. stomach. Yeah. I do like this trajectory. Yeah, OK. OK. Then I will move in. Is the position OK? Yeah, do yeah I it looks good. Now it's good to move? No? OK. Okay, please show me the reflect. And I opened. I see the clip is a bit rotated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Uh, can you please show the, the unfound cell again? 3D. Okay, clockwise, please. Yeah, because here is the A to P2, and looks safe, so I will rotate here. Okay, a little bit. Now, this enough or not? Not, not enough. Okay, okay some please. more. <laughs> okay. Ooh, okay. It's very hard mm. time for Professor Kim. Oh. High plane place? Yeah. Oh, initial, actually, no assistance right now. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Can you uh, check the angle again? Because the, we cannot clearly visualize the reflect and clear. Sometimes echo is uh, really difficult, you know, TIA is really yeah. a echo guide procedure. So yeah. uh, I, I, I want to uh, raise a question to the panel as well, uh, Dr. Kang is uh, working on that, is uh, what is your threshold of using a uh, long clip uh, in functional mitral augustation? Any comment? What is okay. your threshold of using good. a longer clip? Okay. Uh, I mean, it, with this broad jet, uh, okay. I, a, a double out. clip is definitely the first choice for me. Uh, what about uh, using an NTW versus an XTW? What is your choice uh, and, and also the uh, rationale of making yeah, your decision? I see. My, it's, I think it depends on okay. each institute. In my center, the key factor is the lens of posterior leaflet. Usually I use a cutoff for one and 12 or 13 for uh, XDW, XDW clip. Yes, I, I agree with Takashi. So I think that they depend on the uh, operator's preference. So, uh, for me, so I like the longer arm clip, so use the 
positive reflex is uh, uh, more than 10 millimeter, so I will use the uh, uh, XW widely. Uh, even in the, the functional mode. So, uh, uh, same opinion so to uh, Takashi or Sunsuke, but okay. I think one, one concern is uh, uh, about this kind of case because the ripple is, uh, looks normal. Too wide. So, uh, yeah. I think uh, there is uh, some increased attention with uh, long play at the time. So, I think uh, uh, this is uh, some caution of the okay. some ripple. Okay, that looks good. Yeah, during the clip. Let's say color. Uh, is there intention is one of the things that we need to consider and uh, I would agree with Takashi. The yeah, all, the all location the looks the good. Uh, uh, to certain extent, I would um, sort of uh, stay away from long okay. Okay. if it is not A2P2. Yeah. Yeah. So if this uh, if point is good, more A1 or A2, orientation. then I would uh, stay away from Before, uh, longer uh, groups. Also in because of attention. We, yeah, we also prefer the longer clip. Slightly counterclockwise place. First clip, more. Dr. Gang? Yeah. Yeah, counterclockwise a little bit. Yes. A little bit rotated. Okay, okay, okay. Explain again. And I did my best to okay. make the leaflet on the clip. Yeah. Mm. Do you agree? With the, do you like the down the grip part? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will. Mm. Can you please show me the echo? Yeah. Yeah, we can clearly see the echo. Yeah. Pipeline. Okay, uh, I okay. will put down the gripper. Mm. But the posterior ripple is not very thin. Yes. Okay. How about posterior? Okay, good. That's good. Now it's the, the 60 degree. Making okay. oh yes yeah yeah this is okay yeah. yeah make a problem with that team <laughs> yeah. yeah can you please show the top color plot? please yeah hmm. <laughs> then, shall I close the sixty degree yeah this is yeah pretty degree. close please okay I will close the clip. <coughs> Yes, fully closed. Oh. Uh, Posterior insertion looks good, and anterior insertion looks good. Uh, yeah. Dr. Che, I've, I've, oh. you can see the, 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 the turn on the yes. color flow. Yeah. Yeah. Con um, echo contrast was shown. Oh. Echo yeah, contrast you can clearly see that is very impressive. Wow. <laughs> yeah. One clip is enough. <laughs> yeah, better than expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's check uh, permanent flow right now. Yeah. So I want to ask the panels that how many of the operators are using the continuous LA pressure monitoring. I tried all, um, some time, oh, but the result is was prominent. not so accurate. Yeah. So that they came lost to check the pulmonary venous flow level. Slightly increased in s velocity in pulmonary flow, right upper pulmonary vein, and right lower pulmonary vein. Right here. Do you w. usually apply the continuous LA monitoring or? I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Cyborg usually do that with the big tail catheter. Oh, yes. I know he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slightly right. increased in S velocity mm -hmm. in okay. both pulmonary veins, as you can see here. But let's check pressure gradient. Pressure gradient is just two. Yeah. Low gradient. Low gradient. And the degree of the MR is now trivial or mild. Yeah. And we can see the set. Yeah, the insertion looks good. Is good. Then shall I deploy? OK. Yes. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do we agree? Uh, deploy yeah. the cannot be better. Right? Right? We agree. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cannot be better. But or Everybody agrees. Yeah, then I'll check the angle. Okay. Oh. 
So one, one okay. consign, actually this is one clip case, but one consign is this patient is now it's, it's dry rather, uh, than uh, the usual. So just in case uh, MR doesn't get worse after procedure, maybe uh, yeah. I can, uh, we can increase uh, blood pressure and mm. make yes. sure that MR doesn't, doesn't get worse. Okay. That's a very good idea. But it, it, I think already this, the pr blood pressure of this patient is already high. Yes, what what is the blood, blood pressure, pressure right now? It's, it's 113. Yes. Yeah, we are yeah. using dop dopamine. Mm. Yeah. But his usual pressure is 80, right? <laughs> mm. Yes. 80 or 90. Yeah. Okay. So line is so, so smooth. Okay. Living. Very straightforward case. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and check the clip. It's okay. So, so deploy 하겠습니다. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Deploy. Okay. 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 Both sides of the first clip, but the uh, pressure is low, and the MR is acceptable. But I think that in these, uh, like like this case, eventually MR increase after inotropic tapering mm -hmm. or or uh, diuretic change. I have to uh, put the second clip in the uh, central side of the first clip. The panel uh, panelists uh, agree uh, my point. Agree with my point, uh, Dr. Kim. Any, wanna, uh, yeah. Any uh, question? Uh, I, I, I satisfied more. with this result, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I would ask to the panelists. <laughs> so, just from lateral size, it's just mild or trivial, and the medial size may be mild. Mm. But the jet mm -hmm. from medial size is not uh, functional. I mean, it's jet from indentation. So, to uh, yeah, but jet to from treat this uh, jet, it's a little bit risky. There is a risk of ICLDA. Mm -hmm. and, and I think in treating the ventricular functional mitral gestation, a complete elimination is not a must uh, because you want to improve the thoughtful and also allow more room for guideline directed medical therapy. So, mm. so this is a very excellent result. Yeah. I think that there is uh, some controversy because uh, if yeah. we in incre in increase the blood pressure and then we add on the more medical therapy, then we can decrease the MR, but I'm not, we are not sure. Yeah, probably this is uh, <laughs> so the last chance or, yeah, so I think. Uh, For functional MR, yeah. there's always some the confusion, the yeah. where to start and where to go, yeah. And the, in, uh, the subgroup analysis of the quite prior, the decreasing MR degree was the most important mm -hmm. prognostic factor, yeah. Then the increased pro the well, we, we can put on another. Oh, the, yeah. It's increasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. Gang, medial yeah. side is uh, uh, yeah, prominent medial. than yeah, uh, medial, yeah, medial, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Takashi is. How about the uh, say, clip says, uh, stability? Yeah. I think that uh, this uh, ratio is more from the indentation between the P2 and P3. Yeah. So yeah. I think uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, risky to uh, add the additional clip. Mm. The yeah, risky. stability is very good. Yeah, good insertion of both leaflets. Mm. Can you please show the 3D? 3D, okay. Clip looks stable. And 3D shows the good tissue bridge. And where is the jet from? Can you please show the color? Mm -hmm. Media side. Media yeah. side, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Dr. Gang, yeah. I would like to put second clip media side of it. Oh, you want? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, it's yeah, challenging. It's, yeah, it's very challenging. Okay. You can do that. Okay, then can you please the progress the lecture? Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we will do that. Yeah. We will yeah. come back again. Some, yeah. There will be some delay. Go, yeah. Keep going on. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Change to the Let's lecture. It says, uh, I first lecture introduced. Uh, first lecture is this uh, oh, uh, Sun Kubo is from the uh, Kurahashi Central Hospital, Japan. The topic is a challenge tier for the complex primary MR. Please, lecture. Uh, thank you for, for the, your introduction. So, I'd like to talk about the, the tier for the complex primary MR. So the first of all, we, I'd like to show the, the Japanese uh, data. Uh, this is a Japanese PMS study of the 500 patients, initial 500 patients treated with the G2 device. As you can see, the, at 30 days, the MR dramatically uh, uh, improved, and it was uh, uh, very durable through the three years. In the, uh, the three years, uh, as you can see, the uh, moderate arrest is 88%, uh, and the mild arrest is 64%. Uh, However, uh, when we divided the, into the secondary and primary MR, compared to the secondary MR, the MR recurrence of the primary MR are a little bit high, because uh, at such three years, as you can see, the uh, moderate CBI or CBI MR was observed is uh, more than 20%. It's a little, little bit uh, high, and uh, it, uh, I think that it is uh, uh, a limitation of the, uh, the previous T2 device. So when we look, look at the uh, ocean mitral registry, uh, in this registry, we uh, included the uh, 2,150 patients. In this registry, uh, compared to the mild or less MR, so e both uh, the moderate CBI or CBI MR and, and even in the moderate MR was associated with uh, a, high, a higher rate of the death of heart failure hospitalization. Furthermore, so if we evaluate the, the, uh, in the uh, in the primary and sec secondary MR separately, impact of the regular MR was more prominent in the primary MR. From this result, we have to care the both the regular MR and the MR recurrence, in the, especially in the primary MR. This is an expand G4 registry. So even in the uh, 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 metagrip G4 using the XCW, is that this is a, a very high risk anatomy, including the viral disease, by reflex flare and a, a significant secondary jet in the severe reflex degeneration with the large gaps. Uh, it's a very challenging because uh, uh, mild or less is uh, only 75%, and uh, uh, moderate or moder more than moderate MR is uh, observed uh, more than 20%. So even in the G4 device, the high, uh, the complex uh, primary MR is a very challenging. So it, to overcome the, to the, the limitation of the complex primary MR, so we have to, uh, uh, we have to uh, consider the creeping strategy. So I think the complex uh, primary MR included that this is a large virus rate and the non-central MR, especially in the isolated commission perhaps. So how to treat this anatomy mo most effectively? So one first is uh, don't accept the regular flare. So we have to consider the plant clips, uh, in the, especially in the primary MR, and put the clip in the main origin of the MR. Finally, there is a, so no MR and flare in the commissure side to the clip. So this is a, a typical MR recurrence in the MitoClip G4 era. This is a P2, wide P2 prolapse. We put the one XW to the major P2, and there's a, a trace MR, but a six months follow up. As you can see, the some eccentric MR was observed in the lateral to the clip. This is a, a still occurs in the MitoClip G4 era. So to prevent this recurrence, so we have to consider the clipping strategy. This is the same wide P2 frame. So we put the X, one XCW in the medial A2 P2, and there's a trace MR, and, but uh, as you can see, the, there's a some frame here. Mm. So we put the XT to this part. So uh, actually, the, the MR is uh, not so changed, but uh, one year follow up, there's no recurrence. So it's a, the, the clip is very stable, and there is a, uh, only a trace MR. So, so we have to consider so this clipping strategy, in the, especially in the uh, primary MR. 
Next, we uh, present the uh, three cases uh, non central MR. So we have to consider the clipping, uh, clip selection, and uh, uh, optimal orientation. So this is a 93 year gentleman who had a pro of the A3, P3, uh, and the posterior commissure. As you can see, that this is a MR. And you can say props in the A3, P3, and posterior commissure. So P3 length is only 8 millimeter. How about the optimal clip orientation and fit clip should be used in this patient? So based on the uh, P3 length, we uh, selected X NTW. How about the orientation? So in this uh, patient, there is a combination of the uh, A3, P1, P3, and P commission, posterior commission, and P3. So I think the orientation is based on the, the uh, original cooperation line of the A3P3. So, so this is a procedure. So this is a very uh, important technique to do the uh, uh, very commercial uh, MR. So, so we, this is the first try to go to the LV. But uh, this is uh, uh, slightly lateral. So we go back to LV. So second try. So this is, uh, I think, a little bit more medial is the target. So go back LA again. So finally, this is a good position. So finally, we go to LV at third try. Actually, the, the, uh, after that, the procedure is a very uh, simple. So we uh, open the clip and uh, check the orientation below the bulb and uh, maximally pulling up the clip and grip it down. After closing the clip, the MR uh, almost gone. So next, next case is a 91 year old lady so who had a, 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 a prolapse of the anterior commissure and A1. So this is a, a bicommissure image. This is a 3D image. You can see that clearly she's a isolated anterior commissure prolapse and A1 prolapse. The MR uh, coming from the anterior lateral to the posterior medial. So this is a A1, P1, and this is a anterior commissure and P1. So P1 length is so very limited with uh, uh, less than eight millimeter. So how what is the strategy? So we uh, choose the NT clip based on the limited P1 length and the very narrow uh, anterior commission scallop. Orientation is uh, decided to grasp the this props. So I uh, so so uh, isolated the anterior commission props. So. I think the orientation like this, to grasp the uh, anterior commission. So the, the procedure is uh, not so uh, uh, complicated. So we inserted the LV at the most lateral part. So we open the clip and turn a little bit counterclockwise to the, uh, as my strategy, and try simultaneous grasping, but uh, <coughs> The, the anterior leaflet, uh, the, the insertion is, uh, uh, is uh, good, or I wonder if it is good. So we uh, confirm using the control grip actuation system like that. So after closing the clip, so MR, ni MR nicely uh, reduced with a no eccentric MR. That there is some uh, 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 regular MR, but we accept it because uh, you can see that there is a lot of mark in here. So uh, hemodynamic uh, uh, improved. So final case is 85 years ready. You can see a huge P3 flare. It's a, actually the flare gap is a more than 20 millimeter. So you can see there's some cold rupture here. So this is a posterior commissure. This is a medial A3. It's, this is a lateral A3 P3. So actually, the, uh, I think the, the co posterior commissure is already also prolapsed, but uh, it's a combined uh, P3 and uh, posterior commissure. So what is the strategy? So I think that this, this is a very large flare and wide, wide flare. So we have to put the two clip with the uh, X series. And how about the orientation? This is a, a P3 and a P compromise, but uh, this is a combined. So I think that orientation is decided based on the traditional S3 P3 cooptation line, so like this. The, this is the first clip. So grasping, uh, uh, this is the uh, orientation. Orientation is seems to be good, but uh, uh, the grasping is, uh, of the P3 is uh, very challenging. So, uh, so we use the control grip, control grip actuation system. So we put the grip, anterior gripper first, and then 
we put the post grip like this. So uh, as you can see, the leaflet insertion seems to be good. So we close the clip. Hmm. After, even after the closing the clip, there is still a severe MR, but the, uh, the, the definitely MR was improved. So we release the clip, and uh, we select the uh, XT for the second clip. So also, we use the uh, control group activation system uh, to uh, grasp the, uh, in the second clip to uh, yeah, secure the leaflet insertion. We put the posterior grip first, and then under grip down. So after uh, closing the clip, MR only mild, and with no eccentric MR. So this is the final slide. This, uh, I think that this is a key point for the complex prim primary MR. So the, the for the non-central MR, we should select the clip based on the leaflet length. So usually the prolapse leaflet is very long. So this is a, a leaflet length opposite side of the prolapse. So clip orientation based on the co-optation line, so A3P3 or A1P1. But uh, if the, the non-central MR with the commissure reason, so we should, clip, we should select the clip and the orientation to grasp the commissure scallop. Finally, in the fuge and wild flare, I think a control grip activation system for, is a uh, very good option for the better grasping, and the plant to clip should be considered to cover the full part of the flare. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, nice lecture. Uh, uh, discussion is, is uh, two, uh, after two, the, two lecture finishes. And I'll introduce the second speaker. The so second speaker is uh, Jung Sun Kim from Severance Hospital, Korea. Uh, the topic is the complication of the mitral tear. Yeah, thanks for introduction. Uh, as you know, there are several possible complications. Which is uh, some of them, some of them is uh, procedure related, and some of device related. But Tear procedure is a relatively safe procedure. Real world data shows a very low intraprocedural mortality, 0.1 or 0%, and, intra, and hospital mortality is 2.4 and 3.6%. But lady study shows uh, with uh, recent advanced uh, uh, technology reported even lower in hospital mortality, around 0.9 and 0%. So let me start with the uh, cardiac tamponade. Incidence was 0 to 0.5%. Uh, Here is our case, 82 years female. He, she has a uh, mixed uh, etiology of the MR and uh, severe uh, LA enlargement, as you can see here. So during the procedure, uh, there's a, a cardiac tamponade. So we did the pericardiosynthesis and drew the 2,000 cc of the uh, blood. But patient was uh, somewhat unstable, but the proceed the procedure because of the uh, incident incidenting on and the, the uh, continuing procedure uh, by the imaging specialist. So finally, we got a one one clip and there is a, some residual MR. Then we put another one, and here is a final result and there is a, some mild MR. So we can finish the, this case without any severe complication. So how to manage cardiac tamponade, immediate immediate pericardial synthesis if necessary, in case with a puncture with only needle, immediate reversal, therapeutic anticoagulation, removal of needle may be, in, may be adequate. But in this case, we just uh, uh, maintained ACT 200, 250 during the procedure. If guide catheter or other equipment has been advanced into the pericardial space, I think it's important to not immediately remove them once problem recognized, so considering should be made for the surgical remover. So the other complication is air or thrombotic event, instance three to seven percent. So how to manage air embolism or detect? Usually air embolism manifests at a stroke or a coronary ischemia, ST elevation, especially RCA territory. So we should extra care with aspiration flushing during the uh, procedure and at, uh, in this event, uh, we usually uh, uh, maintain the adequate oxygenation, hemodynamic support uh, with uh, uh, fluid or pressors. Otherwise, I think uh, we also encounter acute thrombus formation uh, around the uh, tip 
of the uh, device. So in this case, we usually wait and see strategy with the ad administrate uh, heparin or thrombocytopenia or low dose thrombolysis. So leaflet injury and coda entanglement also occurred in instance over zero to two percent. Here is one one of our cases, uh, uh, eighty two years male. He experienced uh, uh, acute myocardial infarction uh, with stenting and per persistent atrial fibrillation. So. And he has a mixed etiology and also proleptic motion of the uh, PML. And also, as you can see, uh, AM, yeah, here is AML. And we tried to three times attempt. In this moment, we only have an anti system. So it is not so easy to grasp in this morphology. So finally, what happened, as you can see here, there is uh, some caudal rupture and increased MR. And it is a more difficult situation to grasp with the anti-system. So we moved to the location, more medial part, and then uh, central part again with two clip. We decreased the MR, but as you can see here, there is uh, some residual uh, moderate MR in this case. Uh, so how to manage your caudal entanglement? I think the most important uh, thing is assessing device trajectory, considering caudal structure and direction. So the other one is uh, adjusting device orientation before valve crossing is very important. Don't rotate more than 50 degree within a ventricle, especially a uh, crowded uh, some area of the code. So the other, uh, also the other important thing is avoiding excessive opening and premature deployment device apparatus. If these kinds of event occurred, we should entangle device so, re so we to reverse the set of movement. So we should uh, remember the step by step. Also, uh, finally, we can re evolution with a 270 degree angle and trip to into the raptor atrium. And the other case, I think uh, this is a very painful case. There is a uh, uh, persistent atrial fibrillation, and he has a history of uh, stenting. And as you can see here, a very large gap, very flattened atrial functional MR, but a valve area is uh, enough. So we try to clip on in, but MR is not that decreased over the time. So we try to second clip, but increase the MR over the time, as you can see here. Finally, we can find out the, some leaflet injury tearing and increase the MR. Finally, he can go to the emergent mitral uh, replacement. So what is the issue? So excessive tension should be avoided in case with a long clip and annular calcification in this case, because this case has a very severe annular calcification as a postal leaflet area. Also, uh, an important measure of caution is slightly advanced the clip into the ventricle direction during the clip closure, which decreases the tension of the clip uh, leaflet. So this is another concern using the uh, longer clip, as you can see here, uh, to injure replet due to the longer arm with a higher uh, force on the replet per se area. So the other issue is the mitral stenosis. Then how to reduce the mitral gradient? Firstly, we can reposition, do the reposition mitral clip with less uh, tissue grasp, then de decrease the tension of the replet, but that is another some we have a caution yeah, to uh, not to at the expense of safe tissue, uh, safe tissue grasp to the avoid SLDA. So the other uh, thing is that we can move uh, reposition uh, mitral clip to the more lateral replacement to the jet and otherwise anti instead of XT system. And also the other uh, thing is, uh, uh, interesting thing is once clip list, the usual gradient may be potentially decreased by uh, up to uh, 20%. Also the other uh, uh, should be considered if a residual MR is significant, this may be drive trans uh, mitral gradient firstly higher due to the increased mitral flow the valve. So last thing is uh, SLDA and embolization. So, I think SLD is over the time a significant decrease due to the implanter's uh, running curve and advance in clip system. It initially, Everest, uh, at one trial reported 11%, but right now G for 1.7%. Also, uh, in terms of clip embolization, is a reported uh, T TCVT and TVT, 07 and 0.1%. But 
We, another issue is a successful, uh, rate, success rate of reintervention with tear in this situation is around 25 to 50%. <coughs> what is the reason of the SLDA? Uh, firstly, in adequate LAPLAP capture, one of you know, possible is a poor echo imaging and short leaflet, and the other is a poor tissue quality is also important in thin leaflet like this patient and the other, other classified uh, leaflet or annulus. So uh, another uh, cause of, of the uh, <coughs> leaflet injury, excessive clip uh, leaflet tension, which is a possible cause. So here is a one of our case, ESL, the hemodialysis, and atrial fibrillin, CBU, MR. <coughs> and we thread forward the one clip XC system, significant decrease <coughs> MR, but he has uh, another um, stenosis of the circumflex. We did the stenting, but after stenting, was uh, retro wall motion is significantly improved. Then during the follow, the the clip, yeah, location was was significant change. Then there is a anterior <coughs> is uh, detached. So also the other case is uh, 84 years female, uh, persistent atrial fibrillation, significant MR. So in this case, we uh, did the two clip, as you can see here, significant decrease. But after deploying the second clip, we identified <coughs> CLDA. But MR was not significant, but during the follow, one clip was disappeared, chest PA, and uh, detected in, in the iliac artery area. So we did a T increase the MR. So finally, we did another procedure and decrease the MR and remove the device. So in summary of my presentation, appropriate plan and target goal are needed for the especially difficult cases. To pre, uh, reduce the complication, operator have to aware of this adverse event and their risk factors and familiar with their plot flex and bailout option. So further uh, improvement of device and experience operator should be warranted to reduce complication. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Rice Lecture. We move to the live section to the Asan Medical Center. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Uh, we implanted one more XT, just medial to the first clip. I think the first clip is a little bit laterally the declined. And can you please show the color clipping Moment, yeah. Ah, clipping moment. Okay, review image. Okay, the clipper is down. Okay. After then, like this. Now we are here. Explain you mean the more sure the medial part? Media. Yes, medial yeah. part. Okay. There are some, as the Google pointed out, there's some indentation and there was some increasing. The MR. looks good. So we cut. That portion. How about the degree of MR now? Color, please. Ah, looks okay. good. Trivia. Looks better now. Uh, so I'm deploying. Yeah. Okay. Color. The insertion looks good. Yes, okay. So I'm removing the long line. Okay, smooth. And final check of the clip arm. Okay, it's okay. Deploy, Kamida. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Deploy, Agasunida. Deploy. Okay. Look stable. Yeah. How about the uh, echo? Let me check. Uh, Doctor, there is a, some difference, <laughs> some trajectory uh, between two clips. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 
the first clip is some laterally rotated. Yeah, so the, you can see that the, the X-ray image is not so pure, pretty. Do you think it's, uh, there's some rotation after the first clip is uh, released? Well, first clip, after just releasing, it was, it was uh, declined to the lateral side, like this. Mm. Uh, In the 3D, it clearly shows uh, that uh, <laughs> yeah, direction of the clip. Yeah. So any pressure was before procedure was the 4T, and now 3 Yeah, key. it's velocity more but prominent in the left prominent vein. A and V wave. And the baseline, the eddy pressure is high. It's ten, so over 10. Prominent vein flow it looks better than before. Yeah. How about the, the degree of MR? In but mild. Yeah. But we did not show the degree of MR uh, during your lectures. The degree of MR increased. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, just after deploying the first clip, the degree of MR was mild, but it increased uh, with time, and about to, to moderate. So I, I think that the adding one more clip was a good choice. Let's check a pressure yeah. gradient. Can you, can you please show the, because of the time is over, uh, can you please show the final Doppler? Yeah. Okay, pressure gradient is low, definitely. Yeah, looks low. As much as two or three. The line is slightly uh, deviated from the perpendicular plane, but it's almost there. Two, okay, two. Uh, maybe three. Yes. Then I will, uh, let me conclude our uh, the live case. The 63 year old male patient with the whole come one out plus the multiple MI uh, with the end stage heart failure. And we treated the patient with the ischemic heart cardiomyopathy with a severe MR with the two clips. <clears throat> and I hope the patient receive better medication and tolerate the full heart failure medication and eventually get better. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you for your attention. Thank, thank you, Maestro, thank you. Lecture and the wonderful Maestro. Okay. So uh, yeah, I think it's time to close. I, uh, thanks for you all, uh, co-moderator and speak to speakers and panelists and all audience. I think I enjoy uh, the rest of the uh, conference. Thank you.